It's in the category munchies, food by vice. <laughs> it's in the munchies category. So now re remember, we've been following the, the Pablo Escobar's revenge for a while now. So they started out as four, three cows in a bowl, right? All three cows in a bowl. And they let him. And they're like, uh, so they, 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 they straight up murdered Escobar, the Colombian PD. They caught him. And they're like, pow! None of this. Hey, put your hands up. You're under arrest. They're like, no, f you. <laughs> they, they shot him dead. So, uh, and then they go to his hacienda, his his giant mansion, and he's got this private, you know, zoo. I'm like, what the f are these hippos? They're big. They're mean. They're you know. They're like, just open the gate. Somebody had the idea. They're like, open the gate. They'll just wander off in the woods and die problem solved except they didn't wander off into the jungle and die they wander off into the jungle and fornicated that's right back in 2014 eight years ago they were concerned that they might get quote out of hand <laughs> and one wildlife expert one guy he offered a solution Jared, what was that solution? It says there's a possible upside to eating Pablo Escobar's hippos. The drug kingpin left behind more than just a trail of cocaine. He also left a small herd of hippos, which could feed a small army of hungry Colombians. When Pablo Escobar got shot in the ear in 1993, he left more than just a legacy of a bizarro world Robin Hood who trafficked billions of dollars of cocaine and spread his wealth among the poor of Medellin. 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 It's a Medellin. I did, oh, we're not on public. Dang it. It's I did, Medellin. I did that for the the uh, enjoyment of the public people, but they're not listening. They're not hearing it. <laughs> he also left hippos. At the Hacienda Napoles, Escobar's lavish estate in Porto Tri Triunfo. Triunfo. Triunfo, Colombia. Triunfo, Colombia. The kingdom built himself a series of distractions that included a private bull ring, a herd of concrete dinosaurs. That's what I want right there, concrete dinosaur. And a menagerie of giraffes, kangaroos, exotic birds, and hippopotamuses. Hip what began <laughs> is a small family of herbivores, one male and three females, all purchased from the San Diego Zoo in 1981, has become a herd of somewhere near 50 and 60 hippos. Holy cow. Many of which still live in. Remember, Poles, man fifty and sixty was the number in twenty fourteen. Yeah, <laughs> but at least twelve others have broken free of the fences and gone as far as one hundred fifty five miles away from the compound, where they demolish crops and sometimes stomp small cows. It doesn't help that some Colombian children who perhaps didn't grow up learning that hippos are known to be one of the most dangerous animals in their native Africa think that they're harmless or even cute. A recent report, remember this is eight years ago, by El Colombiano noted that kids are swimming with the hippos and feeding the calves. Wow. You want to associate people with food, food with people. Yeah. The skin, which can grow up to two inches thick and exudes a red slime that acts as a natural sunblock, probably doesn't make a very good, uh, I don't know what this word is. I think it's a, it's a fried Charong. skin. Chicharron? Yeah. yeah. I'm going mean, to need help. Um, Zach, call go Sammy. get Sammy and ask her what this is. Send her that word and ask her how to pronounce it. Chicharron. 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 And a chicharron is a fried. A it's a fried skin treat. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Like pork rinds. Like pork rinds. One scientist, however, thinks that hippos should would make a lovely barbecue. When one of the hacienda's hippos was accidentally electrocuted during an experiment with electric fencing. The carcass became. <laughs> hey, turn that down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> I guess a hippo is a good thing to test it on. <laughs> they like, get through the thick skin. They're like, hey, put up an electric fence, and then like, <laughs> like, oh yeah, you might want to crank that down. They had it. They had the electric fence turned up to eleven. The carcass became dinner. What did the local pe people do? Yeah, they took them, they chopped them up, and they barbecued them, and they ate them biologist Patricia von Hildebrand told the BBC. Apparently it tasted like pork. So this is where we can go ahead and put a pause in on that one. 
Here's the deal. If you are a big game hunter and you go to Africa and you get a hippo tag in Tanzania or wherever, you can kill a hippo. You don't get to take the whole hippo home. The hippo meat does not leave Africa. It all goes to the locals. You get to take the hide or the head or the whatever, right? And uh, and they eat it. 1,200 pounds. That's a lot of freaking from meat. From an average-sized hippo. 1,200 pounds of protein. Have very little fat and a high yield of edible protein. Yeah. And you can make serious hams. There's You can make hippo ham. I'm not even joking. You imagine a hippo ham? You know, like a regular pig ham about how big a uh, hog ham is? You're like a hippo ham. Like, it's Easter. We're having hippo ham. So, but my point is this. Did they do this? No, they didn't do it. Do you know why? Because liberalism. Inhumane. You know, this is the, some people see problems. We see solutions. 